All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rachak Radash. I want to give double honors unto the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, peace and salutation to the Akim, and unto the elect that scatter across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth and faith and sincerity. I want to brother Shemai Allah from the Houston camp. You know, and uh, yesterday, you know, long story short, this Christian or Catholic or whatever he is, basically he was he was, you know, at work trying to break down and say that the Heavenly Father and His Son or God and Jesus basically are the same person. All right, and I wanted to you know say something so bad you know, and and try to you know confound them. All right, but that's it's not wise to get into all that at the workplace. All right, it's a job because you can get fired. All right, so if you're in this truth, you shouldn't be doing that. All right, the scriptures say, be ye wise as serpents and harmless as doves. All right, you got to be wise in situations like that. So since I couldn't take it out on him, I'm just going to come do a video on it. All right, you just got to use that energy and, you know, turn it into a video. You know, because I was burning inside, I had to say something. All right. And it got to the point where I got it. I got a fucking headache. I'm, you know, and I'm just going to get into the scripture, you know. Basically, John 17. All right. The Lord, Yahweh, whom he equally called Jesus. All right. He was making a prayer. All right. Basically for the elect. Now, let's see who he was making this prayer to. This is John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahweh and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorif glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So who is he talking to if they are the same person? All right, he's talking to the most high Yahweh, the power of Israel. All right, he says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son. So that's a distinction. He's calling him the father and he's calling himself the son. Two people. All right. The Lord was not crazy in the head. He was talking to an actual, I wouldn't say person, but spirit. All right. The most high. All right. Talking to an actual power that exists. All right. Other than him. It says, verse 2, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he was given power. All right, what, else, what other scripture says this? This is Matthew 28, verse 18. And Yahweh shot came and spake unto them, which them being the disciples, saying, all power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth. So, who gave him this power in heaven and earth? If he was already the Father, if he was already God or the Most High, why did he have to be given this power? <laughs> you know, and people not going these Christians they don't know or Catholics they don't they don't they don't know what the hell they're talking about, man. All right. Because their doctrine don't even add up with the scriptures. John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee. The only true power. The only true God. And Yahweh Shah. Whom thou hast sent. He was sent by the most high. He's telling you in this scripture that he was sent. All right. By someone other than him. Bro, this is plain. Like, how could you even believe in that madness? Wow. This is Matthew 26 and 36. Then cometh Yahweh shall with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, 
Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. So basically, Yahweh Shah, he knew what he was about to go through. He knew that he was going to be beaten, whipped, and crucified. You know, but he was praying to the Most High, the Father, the Son was making that prayer to the Father. All right. Basically, you know, he did he he didn't want to go through that. All right. And he was trying to get it to pass from him. You know. He tried, you know, find another way. All right. Because like I said, he knew all that he was about to suffer. All right, for the children of Israel's sake, all right, for their sins and his sins also, all right. But that's another topic. But like I said, he was making a prayer unto the Father. And if you go to verse 44, it says, And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So he was praying again. Again and again. So if he is God, who is he telling to let this judgment, all right, the things that he was about to go through pass from him? Who is he talking to? He's making a request unto someone other than him. Because if he is God, why could he just be like, I'm not going, I'm not doing it this way. I'm finna do it another way. You no, know, why could he just be like, oh, I'm not, this is not finna happen. All right. I'm gonna do something else. But no, he's praying onto someone else who has the power to be able to make, you know, to make him not be able to go through that. A higher power. All right. You got to explain that, man. Y'all Christians got some explaining to do. Matthew 27 and 46 in about the ninth hour, this is dealing when you know you have showers on the cross. All right, Matthew twenty-seven and forty-six. In about the ninth hour, Yahusha cried with a loud voice, saying, "Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani?" Or, or Thani. That is to say, "My power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me?" Who? What's he talking to? Who did he cry out to? If he is already God, why is he saying, my God, my God? So he's letting you know that there is a power in the heavens. All right. Man, this is Matthew 2, verse 1. Now, when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. I saw Yahweh was just was just born. All right. So he was a, he was a child. Remember that. Yahweh Shah was just a baby. That's the only reason I read this first scripture. Alright, but 
if you read this whole chapter, basically Herod, you know, he was trying to kill Yahweh. All right. But Joseph found out about it. And let's see how Joseph found out. This is Matthew 2 and 12. All right. It says, and being warned of the Most High in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Yeah, because Herod sent men to, to find the Lord, all right, to find the Messiah, all right, and they found him. But the Most High, <laughs> the Most High warned them in a dream not to go back. Remember that. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. All right, so verse 12. All right, it says, The Most High warned them in a dream. So, if the Lord is God, all right, he was just born. He's a baby. His spirit is in the flesh. Who gave these men these dreams? Job 33, 14. For the Most High speak it once, yea, twice. Yet man perceived it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction that he may redraw man from his purpose and high pride from man. So the Most High sends men her dreams, you know, and seal their instruction, basically. Saying this is what you're going to do the next day, this and that, you know. The most I basically programs you on what you're going to do. Basically, because the scriptures say everything obeys the most high's will. All right. So the most high controls everything. He sends the dreams. All right. The most I give the dreams. So. In Matthew, the second chapter, Yahusha, all right, whom you even call Jesus Christ, he was just a baby. He was just being born. So when it says the Most High, verse twelve in the Most High, it says that being warned of the Most High in the dream, was that talking about him? Did he warn the man? <laughs> Bro, y'all, you, you you gotta explain that. All right, you gotta stop teaching those lies, man. And that shit getting old, bro. All right, this is Act six and nine. I was gonna bring out Act seven, but I wanted to, you know, get Act six first. All right, because in Act seven, Stephen. Basically, he's breaking down the history or whatnot. Basically, breaking down the history of Israel, you know, the great men of the Most High. All right. And I wanted to bring this out so you can know who he was talking to in that chapter. It's Acts 6 and, and, um, and 9. It says, Then there arose a servant of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against the Most High. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to council. All right, so now, if you read Acts 7 chapter, this whole chapter, now you know who's he talking to. 
All right, now I can make the point. This is Acts 7 and 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on them with their teeth. All right, because Stephen was getting on them. All right, as he broke down the history, all right, they were cut to the heart because they knew that they were wrong in the inside. All right. And they didn't like that, bro. You know? You know, so after a little while, all right, later on down in the scriptures, they stoned Stephen for that. But before he got stoned, he told them something. What did he tell them? This is verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of the Most High, and Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of the Most High. Now, what did Stephen see? What I, I guess Stephen was crazy. I guess he was crazy too. Then, since people like to say that the uh, God and Jesus is the same person, but in the scriptures, Yahweh Shai, all right. He was clearly praying onto someone else, all right. Because if he is the, if he is the Most High, if he is the only God, then that would make him crazy, right? So I'm guessing Stephen was crazy too. If he seen, you know, Yahweh Shah standing on the right hand of the Most High. <laughs> Man, you people got some explaining to do. All right, which we already know the truth. All right, through our apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. All right, we just were set up to, you know, to expose these lies of these other doctrines. All right, so more of those stories, Yahweh Shai, all right, and the Father, Yahweh are two separate powers, two separate entities. All right. And with that, I'm going to say shalom.